am I testing this again? Well, a lot of people accuse me of being biased towards DJI. They think because DJI sent me the Avada that I owe them some sort of allegiance. And I think a lot of you that have just showed up here on this channel forget that I always come at things very objectively. When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. And when I'm not wrong, I'm not gonna back off of that. So um, I look at things from a, a data-driven standpoint, an experience standpoint. This particular drone here, I have well over 100 flights on this drone in multiple locations, multiple climates. I've produced several videos with it and I've pretty much flown it every single week, even for clients. And I haven't had any problems with it. So when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at it from my experience, not looking at it from others' experience, but I'm also looking at it from me as somebody who's, I would say, a seasoned FPV pilot. I haven't had a problem. So I did go out and buy this one so I have some sort of skin in the game, some sort of investment. So if I lose this, it's going to hurt because I spent $800 to get this drone. Um, so I wanted there to be some sort of skin in the game while I was testing this particular issue. Now again, leaving the rates to default should give us a good understanding of if it's the rates being overzealous, causing the gyro to preload and having an issue, or if it's just actually an issue with the hardware. It's really hard to say, but other than that, I would say also keep an open mind to the fact that there could be a bad batch of gyros. People who flying the FPV world build their own quads are no stranger to getting bad hardware. I've had multiple times where I've purchased a flight controller, get it installed, and the quad just completely freaks out because the gyro is bad. It is not uncommon, and DJI is not immune to having those issues as well. Although they do have better quality control than most manufacturers, it is something that can still happen. And then the last thing I want to just say is you have to think logically and keep an open mind. This whole thing, like just hating a brand, to hate a brand because it's the hip or cool thing to do just to create clicks is sort of getting old. It seems like a lot of people favor the negative content a little bit more than anything sort of positive. I've tried to strike a sort of even keel with all of these videos that I've been making. So with that being said, let me go ahead and start flying this. I'm gonna start off with the, um, the new drone first. Alrighty, so just went ahead and formatted the SD card. I've got it set up, I'm going to see what happens when we start recording. So I set it to manual, I got 15 degrees tilt, and uh, here we go. Now I have electronic image stabilization turned on, and I am just going to turn to the right, turn to the left, home point just update it. And I'm just gonna use more yaw. So it caught itself right there. So I'm just gonna, again, oh, there it goes. Oh, I was able to catch it though. Did you see that? So I could have let it hit the ground, but I was able to catch it by, it's almost like drifting, watch. See, I'm getting stumble. See, it's definitely, all right, so let me just try this again. It is a lot more twitchy with the stock rates. So I'm gonna go up, and now I'm just gonna, up. So it almost flipped on itself going to the left there. So it's definitely something turning to the left. Let's try it again. So I'm gonna go up into the air here, right here. And we're just gonna go full speed and I'm just gonna to try to make a turn. Uh, all right, I'm not gonna add any roll, just yawn. So I'm just yawning right now. See right there, whoop, whoop, almost went down. If I was any lower, that would've hit the ground. Let's do it again. Whoop, whoop, whoop. See, I just don't believe that you can't recover it though. I think it catches people off guard and they're not recovering it because I'm twice now I've been able to recover it, watch. So here I am, I'm gonna turn, hard yaw. And I've been able to recover it each time. Like I'm not, 
And I'm, I'm, I would say I'm pretty, I'm pretty much going pretty fast. So that's 26 miles an hour. How much faster do you want to go? I'm full stick, hard yaw. That one actually flipped all the way around. So here we go, hard yaw. No, I guess, I don't know. So that was pretty fast. So I'm doing 12 miles an hour. So let's go back. We're flying two minutes here. So here we go. I'm going to try to go again. There's somebody walking on the field. Yeah, it's catching itself every single time. So let's bring it back in. I wonder if that's a park ranger or something here. The way he's walking, he's beelining towards me too. Alrighty, so that was the second flight. Um, as you can see, I can definitely get it to where it's gonna flip over, but in both instances, I was able to recover when it did happen. So is this different than what's occurring on the, the drones that we've seen crash and hit the water? I really, honestly, I don't know. I mean, and this is a completely, a brand new unit. This is not even a unit that I've really flown much, so I don't know a lot about this drone. I mean, it's definitely something you'll tread, you wanna tread lightly with. The other thing is I saw Drone Camps RC claiming that DJI has acknowledged this issue. They haven't publicly came out with anything. So a lot of times when DJI acknowledges something, they're gonna publicly come out and they will make a, either it be a Facebook post in their official group. Um, they'll put something on the support page. They'll put it on their Twitter. That's usually where a lot of information goes. It goes out to Twitter. So if you're not on Twitter, you should be, because that's where a lot of information hits first. Saying something to an end user or a support member saying something to an end user is not the same as a company um, making an acknowledgement. And the other thing that makes me leery, especially in his video, again, not really calling him a liar, is that you didn't provide any physical evidence. So the whole thing is, is that if you're going to make claims, you have to have physical evidence to back it up. You have to have data. And I think that's a lot of where, like a lot of these people making content really struggle is with physical evidence. I'm data driven, I'm, I'm evidence driven. And um, as you can see from here, I haven't seen any problems. <laughs> 